Hello everyone, I'm Dave and this is Xylogamoto, the show where I'm on a mission to collect and review every English language master system, Genesis, Sega CD, and 32X title. But not Japanese games because I am nowhere near smart enough for that. Okay, well maybe a few Japanese games, but only ones where I can get by just by looking at the pretty pictures. On this week's episode, I'm back to reviewing a Master System title after a few weeks of looking at games on other consoles. And this week's title isn't one I was originally planning on doing right now, and in fact it might have been a while before I got to it normally, because I actually reviewed a similar game last year when I looked at Caesar's Palace for the Genesis in Episode 7. Normally I try to space similar games out on the schedule just to break things up, and especially not when there's not a ton of games in this genre on the list. So why did I choose to review this week's title? Casino games now? Well, it started with Twitter. AdSense Spaces, who's a former Sega Line staffer and is now a YouTuber and streamer, posted a picture showing nine Master System classics. But one game in that picture, Casino Games, just didn't seem like it belonged at all. So I asked him about it, and he said that back in the day they used to get a bunch of calls about it on the Sega Line. So there you go, and follow AdSense Spaces on Twitter. He's a good one. As you may have guessed, Casino Games is about, well, games you might find in a casino, and at its heart is a gambling title. But it's more than just that, with a little surprise added to it that I'll get to in a bit. Casino Games was released in September of 1989 in the United States, and then in PAL regions a few months later. However, it was never released in Japan, and I can only assume that was because the Mega Drive had already been released as there's not that much of a language barrier in the game that would have needed to be translated over. Even though it wasn't released in Japan, it's one of the Master System titles that ship with an alternate soundtrack using the FM unit. So there's a nice bonus for you if you have the ability to play Master System titles with the alternate FM soundtrack. Casino Games was developed for Sega by Compile, who if you're familiar with Sega, you're probably familiar with even if you don't realize it, as they're the developers behind the Puyo Puyo, Puyo uh, Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine series, along with the LS series, aka Power Strike, and current goldmine shooter Musha. And no, I don't own a copy of Musha yet. I'll try to pick one up before I have to sell a kidney for it. Compile didn't just develop those two series of games, however. They also worked on other titles here and there, and two years before Casino Games, they also released Parlor Games for the Master System, which could be considered as a prequel to Casino Games, and if I was following my own rules for the channel, I really probably should have reviewed it first. Oh well, we'll just do this series in reverse chronological order, I guess. And I'll get back to Parlor Games in about 100 episodes or so. So, Casino Games is a title from a reputable developer that had released other solid titles and was developed specifically for the English market, so we don't have to worry about having any translation issues or just being released to make a quick buck off of a license like what we saw previously with Caesar's Palace. And it was released as the Master System was hitting its prime from a development perspective. But is it any good? Well, we'll find out, but first, a look at the package. And here's Casino Games. And this one is in fine condition, not even any dust on it because it came in a protective bag that I've left on it. Both the overall case and the inner cover look near perfect with no scratches or tears anywhere and an intact hang tab at the top. You can immediately see that this is a later release due to it having a fully designed cover similar to Thunderblade back in episode 57. However, I've still got some issues with it. First off, the game gets the family description. Now, granted, it's a casino-based game, and there's no wanton violence to be found, as there's no scenes of bookies sending their leg breakers after you throwing money, but not all families think that gambling is a good thing, and it's kind of a law that you have to be 21 if you're going to gamble in the United States. I'm being a little ridiculous here, I know, but seeing the family label on this title is kind of like seeing a giant kid's label on a pack of camels. I know what they were going for, but because I know there are others out there that aren't going to be reasonable about this sort of thing, maybe they should have left that off? 
Of course, also, viewing this strictly from a year 2020 lens, and this isn't even a drop in the bucket anymore, so forget I said anything. The other issue I have is that it seems like this is custom artwork for the game and not just some random casino clip art that they found somewhere. And if that's the case, they made a fairly large oops by having the centerpiece of the art be a roulette wheel, seeing as how, spoiler, roulette isn't in the game. Makes me wonder if possibly it was going to be included at some point, and it was removed in development, and they just never went back and changed the art. Last thing about the front cover, it does nicely mention at the top that it supports password saves, which is nice and definitely a good thing to advertise, so at least they got that one right. And to be totally fair, I do like this cover from a design and artwork aspect, but certainly a lot more than many Master System titles I've looked at so far, it just has quirks. Flipping to the back, and it looks sharp, just like the front. I really like this design. It's got four good quality screenshots on the left of the various minigames, and then some nicely formatted flavor text on the right, selling the game in its different modes, with the status box at the bottom that lets you know what's included in the game to sum things up. Although I do have to call one thing out. I think the top screenshot may have been from a development version of the game, because when you play poker, you play one-on-one and not against multiple people, as it shows. Opening the case up, and you see the cartridge looks good, but the manual has some unfortunate black ink on the cover. No idea why that is. It doesn't look like it was drawn, more like someone accidentally filled a few drops on it. But other than that, the manual is in pretty good shape, and I must say this is definitely a good manual content-wise. As you open it up, if you look down at the very first page, you can see it has a section on each and every game, and each section has tons of detail. Even the pinball section at the end goes into what each of the targets do and possible strategies to get high scores. And then beyond that, there's tons of pictures and a helpful diagram for the uninitiated for various winning poker hands. Sega definitely went out of their way to be helpful to the players to let them know how to play the game, and this is actually the best explanation of Baccarat I've read. When I played it in the past in Yakuza, I was only guessing at what I was doing. Helpful manuals like this are just unfortunately a lost art these days. Anyway, so that's the admittedly better than I was expecting package. Let's get into the game. Casino Games is built around a very similar setup to what we saw previously with Caesar's Palace on the Genesis and I imagine it might be similar on other games as well. Essentially, you walk into the Sega Casino with $500 and a dream. A dream where you walk out of the casino a millionaire. And that truly is the goal of the game, to stack your winnings up to the ceiling and win a million dollars, at which point the game will end and credit screen will roll. I like that. It's nice that there's a goal to the game with something to achieve, and you're not just aimlessly putting coins in the slot machines or trying to desperately get one over on the blackjack dealer. How does one earn money in casino games? Well, by playing one of the available games, obviously. The heart of casino games consists of five different minigames. From a gambling perspective, you can try your luck in front of a one-armed bandit and hit the slot machines, take on the dealer in either games of blackjack or baccarat, or take on one of four computerized opponents in five-card draw poker. And finally, there's also a seemingly wildly out-of-place pinball machine that doesn't allow you to win money, but you can't lose money playing it either. So I suppose it offers a nice diversion if you've hit a bit of a cold streak and need a distraction to regain your mojo before hitting the tables again. There's no craps, or kino, or the previously mentioned missing roulette. The card games are all strictly one-on-one -on -one affairs, and the World Series of Poker influenced Texas Hold'em mania was still over 10 years away. Based on all that, it wouldn't be inaccurate to call casino games limited in scope when it comes to recreating the casino experience. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's back up for a second. When you first boot the game, after a pretty nice looking title screen, you're met by a nice looking female casino employee who asks you your name, and you can respond with Mr. or Ms. and your name. After that, she'll ask if you have an account with a casino or if you're a new player. If you had played previously and earned more than $500, the game will give you an account number, i.e. your password, that you can continue with, or you can just take that $500 and head to the tables. 
The presentation here is very nice, even though it's just the intro, and the rest of the game shares that polished feel, with the exception of one game that I'll get to in a bit. Let's talk about each of the games on their own. First, the slot machine. The slot machine is pretty basic. You essentially get a picture of the slot machine, which includes a nice diagram of the payouts, and then a choice of how expensive a token you want to place into the machine, and how many, up to nine. Now, slot machines can vary wildly depending on where you're at, especially now with how much computers have changed everything in the last 31 years since casino games were released. But the particular machine in question here allows three lines of payouts horizontally, if you pay for them. In other words, you would have to pay at least three tokens of your chosen amount to unlock each of the three lines, and then each additional token adds to the multiplier of one line until you get to three times per line. The game only features eight winning combinations, which seems low to me, but it might be right. However, you have to be careful, as the lowest payout is two tokens, meaning if you put in three tokens to have a chance at all three lines and hit that first payout, you still end up losing a token. Also, there's no way to speed up playing the slot machine. You always have to wait for the spinning animation to finish before playing again, so I could see this getting boring rather quickly. The slot machine game is fine for what it is, but if you're serious about trying to beat the game, you probably won't spend much time here, as even if you were to hit a max payout of 3 times 100 tokens, you're only looking at winning $15,000. Let's move on. Next, over to the card games. I'll start with Blackjack. Most everyone is probably familiar with Blackjack, or 21 as some call it. The Blackjack implementation is just you versus the dealer. You can choose how much you want to wager on a hand, and then the dealer will deal the cards. After that, it's a pretty standard blackjack implementation, and it contains all the usual features you would expect to have in a blackjack game, such as the ability to split your hand, the ability to double your wager if you think you can win on the next draw, and the dealer will try to sell you insurance if it looks like they may have drawn into a natural. While there's nothing special here, I must admit it took playing this game and reading the manual for me to finally understand what doubling meant, which is really sad considering I went to Vegas last year. I don't know why it finally stuck here, because I'm sure you could do it in Caesar's Palace, but maybe it has something to do with the relative simplicity of this game. Backrat is next in the queue, and eesh. I hope you like pretending you're James Bond. While playing blackjack solo against a computer is still somewhat interesting, as there's still a bit of skill and chance taking involved, Baccarat completely falls apart in a solo implementation. The first problem is the game almost completely reuses the blackjack engine. Technically, the computer's hand is moved down to be positioned right next to yours to give it a more one-on-one -on -one feel, and the background color is different, but everything else is the same. Same dealer animation, same cards, etc. Then, and this is the biggest problem, there's nothing for you to actually do. Since it's one-on-one, -on -one, you bet the dealer deals the cards, and that's it. You either win or lose on the luck of the draw, and there's no skill involved whatsoever. At least when playing the slot machine, there's some level of strategy as to how many tokens you'll try to use to maximize risk versus reward, but Backrat is literally just a prettier version of watching a coin flip. I almost wonder if it was included just because it was an easy way to include more content in the game, and they didn't really concern themselves with whether it was actually fun or not. The final gambling game is poker, more specifically five card draw. Five card draw is probably one of the simplest forms of poker, and many people play it in their homes or on video poker machines. The video poker implementation is pretty insidious, as it usually involves touching the screen to select which cards you want to discard, and that level of interactivity with the game is part of what makes it so addictive. Five card draw in casino games is no different, as you're just using a controller instead of the touch screen. However, the view, thankfully, is totally different than the blackjack background layout, with the cards of both you and your opponent taking up a much larger section of the screen. The actual poker engine is fine, and plays as you would expect. To keep things in line with the simple nature of the rest of the game, poker is played one-on-one -on -one against the computer. You can play against one of four people, two women and two men, and each seem to play slightly differently, with some playing more conservative, 
some having more of a tendency to bluff, etc. However, the poker implementation has some major issues. The first problem I can see is that each of the four competitors has an infinite stack of chips. You can just keep playing against one of them for as long as you want. This of course is highly unrealistic and takes you out of the game a bit. I think it would have made more sense to have each of the four have a limited bank, and once you took someone out, you had to play against one of the other three until they were all defeated, and then the characters reset. The next problem is a big one, and actually it's a bit game breaking. It's appreciated for anyone trying to beat the game without resorting to constantly check your account number when you win money and restarting when you lose, but it still makes the game too easy. In poker, like blackjack and baccarat, your bet is based off how much money you have. The more money you've earned, the larger stakes you can bet for, and conversely when you lose money, you're reduced to wagering less, so it takes longer to work your way back up. It's a good system in practice, although another way they could have gone with the four opponents would have been for each one to be in a different betting tier, but I digress. The problem is, when playing poker, you always ante a certain amount that relates back to your maximum bet. This keeps things interesting, as players won't simply fold on a mediocre draw if there's something significant to lose. However, the antes in casino games are laughably small. For games when the minimum bet was 10k, you could ante just $50 to get a hand. At that point, you could just simply fold until you draw at least a high pair, raise and bet the max amount, and win most of the time. Once I figured this out, I beat the game in about 15 to 20 minutes. So, now you know how to beat casino games. What's left? Well, there's the pinball game that was oddly inserted into the game, that just seems like it's there to give the players something extra to do. However, this pinball is pretty rough, and I'd say it's the low point of the game. In fact, if I didn't know any better, I'd say pinball was a leftover from Compile's previous parlor games that ended up getting cut for some reason. It doesn't look good at all, and plays pretty horrifically, with the balls rattling around like the bottom of a can of spray paint. More than a few times in the brief period that I played it, balls would go straight through bumpers like they weren't even there, and all targets reset each time you lose a ball, so good luck trying to build anything. The game gives you three slope choices for the table, which are supposed to affect how fast the table plays, but I couldn't tell much difference between the three. It's nice that it was added with the rest of the games, I guess, but I think they should have at least given some incentive to playing it. Like if you earned a certain score, you won X dollars. Because without it, there's just no point, and it's a waste of time. All in all, and this is something I had to think about for a bit, I'm giving casino games two stars. I had fun with the game, and let me tell you, betting 100k on blackjack or backrat hand was strangely exhilarating. And as I mentioned before, the game definitely has a nice level of polish in all aspects except pinball, for being a relatively simple game. And the losing and winning endings are a nice touch. Although it's kind of weird that if you sign in as a Miz, you still see the male character in the ending. However, the gameplay is pretty limited, and you probably spend most of your time either playing poker or blackjack. And the in-game music is highly repetitive, so you'll either end up muting your TV or switching games frequently to avoid that. I appreciate Compile's effort here, but it could have been better. Okay, that was Casino Games for the Master System. Seeing as how I've already done Caesar's Pals for the Genesis, that might be it for the next 23 years of Zilog and Moto for gambling games. I'd have to do some research to see if there's any others in the list, or if it's like Championship Bowling was, and it's a genre that I can cross off the list. There's definitely not any titles coming to mind, though. Tune in next week when I go back to the Genesis and get yet another sports title crossed off the list, but it's from a sport I haven't dove into yet so far on Xylogamoto. It's named after a popular athlete from the 90s who even had their own shoe from Nike. But you may not be aware this game exists as it's somewhat obscure. That means it could be a hidden gem, or it could be trash that's obscure for a reason. We shall find out next week. Remember, whatever you like to play, have fun, and be excellent to each other. Later!